Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths and also Supergirl. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, I haven't uploaded in about two or three days. Simply have just been too busy to actually get this video out, but it's been in the making and I've been meaning to make it and I apologize for not uploading in those past two days. If you want any other videos and you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below because I'll happily make them. Gonna try and get back to that daily uploads. Obviously right now we've got nine days until Crisis returns for the final two episodes. So it's not too far away. So let's try and make a lot of content as we lead up to that. I think that's a good idea and that's a good plan. Hopefully I can stick to it. Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about the photos for Crisis and the next two parts. Also, we've got the final synopsis of both of those episodes and we got a little bit of Supergirl stuff to talk about. There's a new synopsis about an upcoming episode. Okay, so yeah, the first photo is of our team, the Paragons. Obviously, Lex is there now. In that same place, we keep on seeing in uh, the trailers. It's like a sort of base or, you know, it's kind of run down. And in the next photo, you see Barry as he's been slammed across the wall. We saw in the trailer, he gets flung across the room. Sort of stuff's going off around the side. Sort of little explosion. Though I don't specifically know the reason why he's being flung across the room, but there is a shot in the trailer in the kind of extended one. And maybe we'll get a new trailer before Crisis comes in nine days. But anyway, back on topic. Yeah, there is a shot in a past trailer where the team are in that same place and it looks like they're actually facing off against Lex Luthor. So is he fighting Lex? I'm not sure but it seems like it's the same place because you can tell the lighting's very similar. Then we go back, same place again, just you know some closer looks at our characters. We got Supergirl and Jean, so Martian Manhunter, they are together. And then we have this, we have Batwoman and White Canary, very cool. Then we have all four of them next to each other. Just some cool photos, nothing much to break down about those right now. But anyway, so we move on to a bearded look at Ryan Choi, the paragon of humanity. And so obviously, I think there's actually a real time break that this is actually like a month, you know, similar to, you know, our break from when Crisis ended for part three till when we get part four, basically. So that's why he's got a beard. And so he's working on something with Lex can see in the next photo they're together and it seems like I don't know maybe this is a way to fix reality it seems you know they've been working on something for a month or so you know whilst we've been on the break and I guess we'll be caught up on all of that but you can see the wires are sort of hanging down it's all broken and you know it's kind of very derelict and so Lex has got something in his hand it doesn't actually look like the book of destiny but it's like some sort of other book then we go to the dawn of time and obviously it looks very different these are just photos from the set they're you know not filmed with proper film cameras it's just photography and you know there is no color grade on it so you see the anti-monitor he is by that massive rock cliff that you know surrounds the whole area and he's fully in costume, obviously that's little Monica Garrett underneath there. You can see, you know, just how good his costume looks, I think it looks really good. Still kind of a little bit weirded out by the way that the NC monitor looks. It's all crusty and everything, and yeah, obviously it's very different from him in actual Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comic book series. Because, you know, this isn't them following necessarily how it goes, because, you know, so far has followed quite a bit but not that much it hasn't been so faithful and this is more like the sort of newer version of the anti-monitor when he's shown up in recent comics okay so still at the dawn of time in that big battle that we keep on seeing in the trailers and we saw in that last photo with the anti-monitor we have batwoman she's obviously in her wig and she's about to fire some things from her arm or she's about to like throw some explosives or something yeah but that's cool then we move on we've got Jean we got the Paragons so we've got the Flash Supergirl Lex Ryan Choi and Batwoman as they face off against the anti-monitor so yeah that's gonna be amazing we've seen this shot in the trailer obviously looks a bit different and actually now looking at this I've realized I missed out White Canary she's right behind Jean I can see her boots 
Okay. Now, just a close look at some of our power guns. We got the Flash and White Canary in the background, and we got Jean. He's sort of standing off very strong. It's also notable that he's not in his Martian Manhunter gear. So you would presume that he's going to be in his Martian Manhunter form. Obviously, this is just a set photo, but as far as I can recall in the trailer, he just looked like normal Jean as well. So, I don't know, maybe he's just going to, like, when the battle starts, he's going to snap into, you know, his Martian Manhunter gear. Then we see our other four Paragons. We got them all next to each other, kind of lined up, and it's just really cool. Get to see them, sort of Supergirls staring into the distance. Same with Lex. Ryan looks a little bit scared, and then Batwoman's, you know, kind of just looking as well. And this is my favorite photo. So this is another angle. There is some sort of beam of light that is hitting their face. It's very strong. Obviously, it could be the sun, or it could be something actually happening, and maybe it's to do with the anti-monitor. But they're together, you can see them all in the background, sort of the hairs waving around, so it seems like maybe there is some sort of explosion or something, maybe that is the cause of the light. But you get to see Supergirl at the front, and it's just a sick photo, it just looks so sick. And it just gets me really hyped, because this is like superhero stance 101, looking into the distance at the villain, and yeah. Okay, so now we get all the Paragons together, another great photo as you get to really see, you know, the whole lot of them and, you know, their powers and their suits and different stuff like that and it's just very, very exciting. Then the final photo is of Jean and White Canary. So yeah, that's it with the photos. Let's go over to the synopsis for episode 4 right now. So this is part 4. This is the Arrow episode. So this is how it goes. Oliver has become something else. In part 4 of Crisis on Infinite Earths, stuck in the vanishing point, the Paragons search for a way to escape. The futility of the situation is compounded by the Flash's disappearance. However, hope appears in the form of Oliver, who reveals that he has become something else. Meanwhile, the origin stories for the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor are revealed. So that's massive. So now I realise, actually, I hadn't read this synopsis before I just talked about that. Maybe that's a bit silly, but that is probably the reason why Barry gets slammed across against the wall, because he actually goes missing, and he's vanished in crisis, as, you know, the newspaper has foretold. And so it seems like there is an impact with the disappearance of the Flash, and it seems like maybe that sets them back a while, maybe that's why they've been around here, but he obviously gets back, because it seems like he's obviously going to be in the final episode. I think that the fight at the dawn of time is actually in the Legends episode. I could be wrong about that, because that seems to be like one of the kind of bigger fights. Or it could be at the end of Arrow, but I would say maybe it's Legends. However, I know the big sort of chasing scene where everyone's back and they're facing off against the Anti-Monitor. We've seen a shot of that in the trailer with White Canary in the just the previous trailer, so that could be that. But anyway, so I'm really intrigued by this synopsis for Arrow because it teases, obviously, the Flash going missing and we know that Oliver has become something else. Like we've been theorising about, this pretty much confirms, yes, he is a new version of the Spectre. So that's his role to play. So that's how he's going to meet the team and he's going to come back and he's going to help them restore what they can and obviously defeat the Anti-Monitor. And in the sort of progress of that, you will see lots of different characters return, like the Monitor, we see Nia Now in a trailer, stuff like that. Okay, so the Paragons are stuck in the Vanishing Point. They try and find a way to escape. That's what's tease. They're going to be there for a month or so, i.e. why the characters have time to grow beards and stuff. And so it says, and hope appears in the form of Oliver who reveals he has become something else. So he's going to appear, he's going to be the Spectre, he's going to help out the Paragons and try to defeat the Anti-Monitor. And then also really interestingly, because I didn't know if they were going to explore the origins of the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor, but it seems like they are. And they're going to reveal some stuff in this episode to show the dynamic between them and obviously maybe a past history with them and maybe show the power of the monitor compared to the anti-monitor. Obviously the anti-monitor is much more powerful 
but I'm really intrigued to see the origin stories for both of those characters and how similar they're going to be. Okay, so let's move on to the synopsis for part 5, the Legends episode of the crossover. The earth-shattering crisis on Infinite Earths crossover concludes. Worlds lived, worlds died, nothing will be the same. So, it's very short, but what it teases is worlds will live. And as of right now, by the end of episode 3 of Crisis, all the worlds are dead. They're all gone. They're all been destroyed. So, yeah, this teases we're going to see the return of some worlds, but there will be some worlds that stay dead, that stay destroyed. And I like that there is sort of a finality to some of the stuff that happens. Obviously, some of the stuff, well, most of the stuff is going to be sort of turn back and maybe they rewrite reality, they time travel or something like that. So I kind of appreciate that they're leaving some of these worlds dead and I really hope Earth 38 comes back. I really do. I know that it will probably merge with Earth 1, similar to how they did in the comics, but you know, it wasn't Earth 38. However, I would just like to see Supergirl stay on another Earth because I think it's cooler, to be honest, because you know, you can introduce the idea of the multiverse every time you have a crossover and I think that's cool. And so yeah, that's about it for the Crisis stuff, let's move over to Supergirl quickly, there's not too much to go over but it's kind of important. So this is for episode 10 of Supergirl, so the mid-season premiere, and this is titled The Bottle Episode. This is how it goes, Megan Raff guest stars, subsequent consequences from the crisis leave Supergirl to face a chaotic threat. So that's about it, that's all it is for the synopsis. Megan Raff is the sister of Jessie Raff who plays Brainy on the show, and as far as I know I'm pretty sure she's playing a different version of Brainiac 5, so you know, different Brainy essentially, and I think maybe this does have something to do with Crisis because the synopsis does tease that she's appearing and that there's going to be subsequent complications as they specifically write about Crisis and you know what happens after so Supergirl will have to face a chaotic threat I don't know if that threat's going to be in the form of a Brainiac played by Megan Raff or not however the bottle episode is the title of the episode which I believe relates back to the idea of maybe Candor and the Bottle City, stuff like that with Brainiac. So maybe this is actually an evil version of Brainiac. I think that would be very interesting to see. So yeah, that's about it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe if you're new, share the video around. We are 200 subs off from 100K, we're getting closer now. It would be really appreciated if you could do all that. So I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.